So if we seek him first, he's got to be first in our lives. You know, God tells us, for your healing, ask me. So you go to God, you ask him for your healing, but God don't honor Jesus. He says, you ask me for your healing, but you got to ask me in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. He puts Jesus first. Who sits on the right hand? Jesus sits on the right hand. Jesus is first. Jesus is the first of the resurrection. He's not the first that was brought back from the dead. There were plenty of people that Lazarus was brought back from the dead. But he is the first that was resurrected under his own power. And he told and when I understood that, that Jesus is the first to be resurrected under his own power. He told the disciples, he says, wait until I send you the power. So we have in us that same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. What, do, what are we doing with that power for Jesus? Since we were created for him, what are we doing with that power for him? That's what he gave us the power for, to act on his behalf in this earth. So yeah. what are we doing with our power? <clears throat> we need to be glorifying God with our power and to build his kingdom with our power. And that same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead is going to resurrect us from the dead. It's going to resurrect that. That's why the Bible tells us when we see him face to face, we're going to be just like him. Because we will have lived under his power. We're going to die under his power. We're going to be resurrected under his power. Amen. And so we need to realize who is head. We are the body of the church, and he is head. He's first. We need to, first thing you need to do in the morning when your eyes open is to recognize Jesus. To recognize why I'm able to open my eyes, why I'm able to get out of the bed in the morning. Even the little things, like, uh, uh, Sister Ronja was saying, the things that we take for granted each and every day, we need to thank Jesus for it because if it was not for him, we wouldn't even be here. We may be here, but we would still be in darkness. Mm -hmm. And he, he, it says here in verse 18, it says, and he is the head of the body, the church, <coughs> who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. He's going to be first in everything, even in that God sent him to earth so that he could be the first to be resurrected, so that he could uh, save us from our sins, so that he could wipe away our sins, so that we could receive the power, so that we could be resurrected with him one day. But he was first. And we got to realize that nothing that we go through, Jesus does not understand. He came to this earth and he walked this earth. And he went through far more stuff than we will ever go through. But he was he came so he could be first of the church to realize and to go through these things. So there's nothing that we go through that he does not know because he came and he went through them first as the church. And so the Bible tells us that he might have preeminence and preeminence means first place. And so we got to let him be first place in our lives, first place in everything that we do. Everything we, that we do we should uh, search ourselves sometimes. Even things that we don't think have anything to do with God. We need to search and, and look, at, look at what we're doing and seeing, is this godly? 
Does this give glory to God? Is God pleased with what I'm doing? Because in the end, he's the one that we have to please. He's the one that's first in our life. And so I pray that this, he, he helped me to realize this the other day. And I'm just so glad that uh, he, this has helped me a whole lot. That uh, if he is first in my life, then no matter what comes up, no matter who I gain in my life, no matter who I lose in my life, I still have him. And there's no, you know, there's, I, I gotta have him first. We all gotta have him first. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We had a beautiful devotion. Thank you, Sister Alma. <coughs> Thank you, Sister Ranji, for beginning the church with prayer. And we are so glad to see Sister Lori and Buddy after she had gone through some um, stuff in her body. And that God is so good that God heals our bodies. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm here to just announce you. As usual, we will have um, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, we have a prayer every Saturday. Please keep it in your mind. Every Saturday, 10 to 11 is just a prayer. Um, and, you know, we just uh, lift up um, each other in prayer. And yesterday we had a very good prayer that we just sat here in God's presence and we prayed. And uh, <coughs> one thing the Lord reminded me. This is a unique church, and this is my prayer house. I will bring my people in here because I was searching and asking God for a long time um, why they, I'm not seeing people here. So finally, the Lord revealed to me, this is my prayer house. So we needed to increase in prayer as much as time that we could come in here and just to cooperate to prayer brings more power and more victory. And we all need to pray, prayer, pray for each other. You know, we may not know what we're going to face tomorrow, but uh, God is in control as we heard. And we just have to rely on him. So prayer is the most important thing that we needed to come together in one mind, in one accord and pray for one another. And Wednesdays we have a Bible study evening, 7 o'clock and one hour Bible study. And Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, we have a Sunday school. Please, I encourage you to come on time. 10 o'clock, we meditate to his board because sometimes we may not find the time at home to meditate on ourselves. So it is good opportunity for everybody to come together to meditate upon his word. And Sister Alma is a teaching, is a very good anointed teachings that she will bring the revelation of the word. So all we have to just take a time. And also another thing that the Lord spoke to me is today is the, the Lord's day. It belongs to him. We cannot do as we please and we can't just uh, do whatever we like to do. We cannot move with our feelings. We just have to go with the Holy Spirit. So this is the Lord's day. When we honor him, when we come and um, <coughs> obey his voice, and there is a great blessing waiting for us. So uh, Sunday morning, Sunday school starts at 10 o'clock, and uh, um, our worship service starts at 11 o'clock. So that's an um, <coughs> announcement. And um, now I think Sister Nidia has a song to sing, what she, that she would bring a song. Uh, she prepared it last week since we didn't have much time, she didn't sing. And it's so nice to see the <coughs> baby and I are here. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So she's in a dancing mood with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. So um, anyone have any testimony before Sister Lydia comes? Anyone wants to say glory to God, what God has done in your life, wanted to say Anything to share with others for prayer?
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Um, last, I think it was this week, I went to with Sister Geraldine to pick up her aunt. And I tell you, it was a good ride. We had fun. We came back. But I found out that she had a problem with the car. After she dropped me over my house, her car stopped. The motor stopped. And I said, wow, that's a miracle. We were on the highway, nothing happened, we made it home. And I was telling her, you know, I've been reading Psalms 91, and covered ourselves with the blood of Jesus. So that was God, what he did, mercy about us, and protect us all the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God is the strength of my heart. Start all over, That's not the song. Oh, God yeah. is the strength Start all over, of my heart. God Start all over. is the strength. And God is the strength of my heart. Oh, God is the strength. Of my heart, God is the strength of my heart and my portion for God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength. My heart, 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 My heart and my strength, many times they fail. There is one truth, but there is one truth that always will prevail. Oh, God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength. Oh, my heart is my portion forever. God is the strength. Oh, my heart. Oh, God is the strength. Oh, my heart. Oh, God is the strength. Oh, my heart is my portion forever. God is the strength. Oh, my heart. Oh, God is the strength. Oh my heart, God is the strength. Oh my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength. Oh my heart, God is the strength. Oh my heart, God is the strength. Oh my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength. Oh my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart and my worship forever. Hallelujah. Yes, God is our strength. God is our great help. Amen. We must need it. Yeah. See, even in the things that we think God has been, and we think we can do, God is there giving us strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He do amazing things in our life. Even things that we don't see. He's working on it. I think the Lord, every 
The students don't want it to read and they don't want to do anything, but they want the A. You know, all the days they, you know, roam in everywhere and don't attend the class and they don't do anything. And the final days, the final grade I want to post on the banner, they're begging, Miss Paul, would you please make me, get me an A? They got a D and <laughs> some of them failed. They want an A. They don't do what they're supposed to do. You know, even in the spiritual life, uh, some of us like that. We want everything, but we don't want to do what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you for bringing us together this morning in your presence, in your feet, to learn, to observe your word, Father. We thank you, we praise you. Let no one leave this place, Father as they got here this morning. Bless every one of them. Not only those who are here, and also those who are waiting upon you at the church on the hill, and those people, those who are watching this telecast, Father. We thank you, we praise you. Speak to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last week we talked about growing up. Right? We talked about the two kinds of people. And the third one we're going to see. The Bible tells us 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through third chapter, and verse 3 up to 3. We talked about the natural man last Sunday and also the spiritual man. The Bible describes, the Word of God describes in the churches there are three kinds of people. One is the natural man. Or a natural woman, or somebody could be a natural man or nat uh, spiritual man. And also, the third category is, we need to know which category that we belong to. You need to know that, what kind of a category you fall into it. If you are in that place, you need to move to the place where you need to be. You know, I already talked about, uh, if you go to the mall, there's a big, you know, when you enter into the mall, there's in the center of the mall, there's a big board 
and uh, also information desk will be there and just a big map is there and when you go to the map and you wanted to look for some shop when you wanted to go to the shop and uh, in the in the map it shows a little red dot or green dot will be there and it the dot shows you are here right if you don't know where you are then you don't know where you are going to and the map never make any uh, make any uh, matter to you so you need to know in the spiritual life where you are then only you can get able to get to the place where you need to be so even in the very in the bible the very first question do you know what the first question is the very first question in the bible god called adam adam where are you that's the very first question today there are many people just like adam hiding they don't want it to be where they need to be and we need to get to the place where god wants us to be amen, amen. so um we talked about uh, two categories last sunday and the third category that i wanted to talk about is the carnal man can you turn your bible first corinthians chapter 3 we're going to see some details in this passage it's really very phenomenal really very 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 interesting uh, chapter this the reason that the apostle paul wrote this thing to the Corinthian church in the Corinthian church there are people just like a natural people they don't think as a spiritual people there are some spiritual people and also there is a third category is a carnal people carnal man or carnal woman okay so you need to know what category you are, whether you, are you a natural man or a spiritual man or a carnal man. The carnal man is unnatural. Carnal man is a unnatural, in other words, abnormality. Abnormality means they are not growing, they are impaired. The carnal people, they never wanted to grow. They stay where they are. Some people, they got saved for many, many, many years ago, but there is no growth in the Christian life. Some of, you know, you know many churches, they have a, this kind of problem. Uh, a lot of people, they are saved for many, many, many years ago, but still not growing. They stopped growing in the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to see uh, one of the carnal man, uh, the problem, what, what the carnal man has a problem. Number one, they are retarded development. The Bible says in chapter 3, verse 1, And brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. There is nothing wrong to be a baby Christian. Okay? There's nothing wrong to be a baby Christian, but the baby Christian must grow. When you are a child, you begin to feed, right? After some time, the child takes and eats by himself, uh, himself or herself. Then later on, when they're grown up, they begin to feed. There are three stages that the carnal people need to do is um, they are babies in the Christian. They don't want it to grow up. They don't. They want to stay where they are. For the little thing, they get upset. The little thing, they get upset. They don't want to do. You know, uh, grow in the spiritual life. They don't. They they have a, a they don't have a tolerance. If there is any corrections made. They cannot take a corrections. They never think that is a good for me. It is good for me to grow in the spiritual life. Jesus said, plain and simply, in this world, you will have a problem. He didn't say the problem will come outside the Christians, 
or you know whether it's going to come through the among the Christians. The problem means it can come through anywhere. The problem could you know come through your own from your own home, your from uh, family members. It may come through your friends. It may come through you know in the, in the church with um, among the believers. So you need to be uh, seasoned for everything. Apostle Paul's life well, well, was uh, seasoned for anything, any kind of calamity. Whether it's a cold, whether it's a heart, whether it's a storm, anything, he seasoned himself. One of the scriptures says like this, I know how to live in a higher standard, when God puts me in a higher standard. I know how to live in the lower standard when I'm in the low. In other words, you know, if I wanted to tell you in a modern you know, style, Paul said, I know how to stay in the Hotel Radisson or Marriott. At the same time, I know how to stay in the Super 8 Motel. You know the differences? You know, more luxurious. I know how to live in God puts in a luxurious life. I can I know how to live there, but I, at the same time, I know how to live when I'm in the low status or when I'm, you know. God puts you or leads me. So most of the Christians, they learn to live a luxurious life. They never wanted to come down sometime when God leads. Amen? Amen. We need to understand uh, the carnal people just like a retarded uh, development. That is, a, if you think about it, um, if you think about, uh, you know, if you have a, if, for example, my daughter was, you know, now she's 24 years or 25 years old. When she was, uh, you know, little, uh, when she says, Dada, it's so beautiful. You know, um, Trinity says, Papa, you know, it's so wonderful to hear that. If she become a 35 years old, if she says, Papa, you know, there's something wrong. There is no maturity. Think about that. You know, now she can uh, take, you know, uh, uh, passive as she can suck. Think about if when she grown up like a 25 years or 30 years, keeping a passive for what that means. They're not mature in the spiritual life. There are so many Christians today like that. They never wanted to grow in the spiritual life. They wanted this, you know, I'm sad, I'm very happy. You know, someday when I die or when I, when I, you know, time comes, I can go to be with God. But we need to understand there are three stages people need to know is number one, when you are a baby, you know, let, let me read this uh, chapter uh, three verse uh, chapter three verse two. Um, I have fed you with milk. And not with meat, for hither, hitherto ye are not able to bear it, neither yet now you are able. What Paul is saying is, it is you know, if, if you are a baby, it's a good to feed the baby's food. You know, you cannot uh, give a one, one and a half year uh, old child a uh, steak dinner. You know, the child needs you know child food, but when it grown up. Think about it, if you take the battle food and feeding the grown-ups, how the people are going to be and how they're going to act. So that's what Apostle Paul is saying. I have fed you with the milk. When you're a baby, I made you know, uh, feed you milk. But when you're grown up, I'm giving a solid food. You need to digest. People need to digest, say I digest. Sometimes, you know, people, they cannot take it, you know, anything that God speaks to them. No, 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 I cannot change it. This is the way I need it to be. So the three stages that people need to know is, number one is, you need to be fed. After you need, you know, you fed, then you need to take it and become, you know, self-supported. You need to eat by yourself. That's the second stage. After you you know, fed yourself and you grown up higher, then you need to feed others. You know, today there are not very many people giving the revelation that God wants to give you or use you in other, other places. They wanted to stay as they wanted, you know, 
one of the things that uh, I found out that a lot of people that go to church, you know why they go to church? Because my friends, they're going there. Some people, they go to the church because they have a programs. Some people, they go to the church because that's a big congregation. I tell you, big congregation, people, a lot of people lost. I'm not against the big churches. I'm not you know, against the big churches. The big churches need to have some kind of a leadership, just like a, the Moses time. They appointed one man for the 10 and one man for the 50s, one man for the 100s, one man for the 1000s, to step by step to lead them and guide them. If that is the principle, you know, the big churches they have, it is a healthy church. A lot of people, they don't know if the one of the one person, if they don't go to church, the pastor doesn't know. He cannot pray for them. The Bible says if a man had a hundred sheep, one, one is lost, the sheep, the shepherd need to know that sheep is lost, why they didn't come, they need to go after, they need to bring them back into the folds. Amen? Amen. So there are three things, uh, things that people need to know. Secondly, restricted diet. The carnal man has a restricted diet. This is the one way I can take it. If anything comes, you know, they cannot take it. Believe it or not, I wanted to tell you this. This is the, one of the saddest things among the Christians. You know, uh, somebody, uh, I didn't invite for my daughter's uh, uh, graduation. I never invited anyone of them, you know, honestly, I never invited anyone from the church because it's a long way, number one. Secondly, there is a very limited ticket. And also it's in the outside in the sunlight. It's in the May, it's a very hot outside in the sunlight. So I thought, you know, we're going to have some kind of, you know, Thanksgiving dinner or something in the church. So I didn't invite anybody. But one of the person, you know, called me and said, you didn't invite me, your daughter's, uh, daughter's graduation. I'm going to quit. Quit coming to church. I'm going to move. See, these are the baby Christians. They never matured enough to grow up, take it easy, certain things. But little things, they can be offended. They wanted to leave the church. I told them, you know, brother, that's the way God tells you to do it, you do it. Why God tells you to do it? You know, uh, I'm fine. Anything that God tells you to do it, you do it. Don't get me, uh, get an opinion from me. For the, they are very restricted diet, you know, the carnal people, they have a very res restricted diet. They cannot take it any corrections. If the people correct it, anything wrong they're doing, they cannot take it. You know what they say sometimes? I've been to the church for almost 10 to 15 years. You know what the pastor said to me like this? I quit going there. You know, not that's not that's immature. That's the immaturity people, they do things like that. So we all need to grow up. The time for us to grow up in the, in the Lord. Think about it. There are so many times that Jesus was offended by the rabbis. Most of the preachers. They asked a lot of questions. They accused him in many ways. But still, he was going to the synagogue all the time. So that's why Apostle Paul said, we need to grow up. Amen? Amen. Hope you don't get upset with me. <laughs> Number three, the carnal people are repeated divisions. You know, carnal people in many churches, they make a divisions. They gather some people together. They try to break the churches. That's their job. That's the, you know, most of the time, carnal people, they never acquaint with the one, one location, with the under one leadership. Always they're trying to break and have another church. I'll tell you the truth, uh, really what happened. There was one big church in Macon, uh, Macon area, and something, one of the men didn't like it, he was, uh, you know, gathered some of the people, you know, being a friend with them, and then split from there and to started another church. Don't ask me where the location is. Okay? Mm -hmm. They started the church, 
And all this is some group of people they followed and they've been there. And after they got there, maybe like a four or five months later, among that group, there is another man gathered another little group and they turned against the pastor and he started another group. And the pastor could not be able to tolerate a lot of people offended, they left the church. After they left the church, they don't have a lot of people, don't have a, a place to go. From that church, they came here. <laughs> don't ask me who they are, okay? They came here, they're making all the little things. You know, one time they complained to somebody, pastor preached to me. Is the message is, yes. he prepared just for me. I'm telling you, believe it or not, I don't have anything to hurt anybody. I cry to God and I ask God to you know, speak to me what is the necessary, how our people need to grow, how our people to be strong in the Lord. And that's all my aims and goals. That's what I'm praying. So they cannot take a little uh, a rebuke. They cannot take it any kind of a, a little you know, corrections. So these people are always trying to make uh, divisions. They act carnally. They think they did for this church for a lot of things. But one little thing, they go and tell all the people, and oh, no, I was in the church for so many years, so many things I did. They never realize they did for the Lord. At the moment when they say, I did this for church, so many things, and the, for the pastor, anything and everything, whatever they did it for the ministry or the church, everything will become unaccounted. Because you are not realizing that you did for the Lord, and you are thinking you did for the pastor or for the church. That's the carnality. People, those who are carnally living, that's the people that think, I did this and I did that. I never say anything, I did this for, I've been to you know, one, one of the churches you know, as an associate pastor. Anything and everything, you know, what, whatever the pastor demanded for me and I did it for me, I did it for the ministry, I never said anything, you know, I did this for the church, I did that for the pastor, but I did unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's what the Bible says. Anything, whatever you do, do unto the Lord. Amen. Even if you give a cup of water to somebody, you need to think that you are doing unto the Lord. That's what Jesus said. One of, one of the group, when, they, when the, the time is going to come, and the time in the, in the last, you know, even to the, Jesus is about to talking about in the last days, you know, when we all face to face with Jesus, he's going to look at one of the group of the people, he's going to say, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was in the prison, you didn't come to see me. I was naked, you didn't give me any clothes. And he turned the other side, on the right side, and he said, I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in the prison, you come to see me. When I was you know, naked, he clothed me. And these people said, hey, Lord, when did I see you that you were hungry? I don't know. When did I you know, fed you? I don't know. When you were naked that I gave you clothing to you. And Jesus said, hey, anything and everything, whatever you've done unto the least, you have done unto me. Today, carnally people, they think, I did this for the man or the church, that moment when you think and it comes out of your mouth, everything will become an unaccounted in the sight of God. People may say, whoa, well, really? That's very good. That's really, very really good. But still, you know, the church will not behave like this to you. Become, they are also become a part of the carnally thinking and carnally minded people. They encourage one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at the scripture, uh, uh, chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
Apostle Paul said like this, chapter 3, verse 3 onwards, For you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, and are not carnal, and walk as a man, for while on one saith, I am of a Paul, and another I am Apollos, are yet not carnal, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos have watered, but God gave the increase. Say increase. increase. So when you do things unto the Lord, then God gives increase. Amen? God gives increase. Today there are so many people, you know, become, you know, uh, some people that followed uh, Paul, some people who followed uh, Apollos, and today is still there like that. Um, when I was in the Bible college, uh, I know a man, uh, he was really fond of this uh, very good preacher, and uh, he follows wherever he goes. He goes uh, for the ministries. I know some of the people, they were followers. It's good to follow of a man to be under leadership with anointing. But at the same time, they need to keep their eyes on God than the man. Because I have seen the people, those who follow the you know, well-known preachers, they're no longer as a preacher today. Amen? But when we follow Jesus, then you will not be a standard. You will not be you know, de-promoted, and God will continue to use every one of you. Amen? Amen. So now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Say labor. 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 So everything, whatever you do for the ministry or for the kingdom of God, you think that you have done for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I heard someone said like this, someone who left the church. If I demanded the church to pay all the, my tithe and offering that I gave to, the church will be, become bankrupt. I told you, my father never became a bankrupt. My father always has enough money. That's what the carnal people, they think. Carnal people, they think, because of me, because of me, everything is going good. There's another, another person, very, very long time ago, they said like this to me, Pastor, why do we need a bigger place? We can have a smaller, uh, in a smaller place, you know, broken out, you know, world building, then we can, we can uh, fix it, we can, you know, have a place of worship. I said that when God gives the best, you know, you want to go to the best or you want to go to the worst? Amen? Amen. How many of you like new things? How many of you like your old, uh, old things? I know some of the things, one things is like antique, but I'm not talking about that. If really, when you go outside, there's a beautiful, uh, beautiful BMW is outside there. Okay? Brand new BMW, 2016. And also next to that, they have a Toyota Corolla, 1968. So now they tell you, which one you like it? Which one you choose? Oh. Oh. Some people they like wool, but majority of people they want the brand new. Right? There's nothing cost, nothing you know you're going to pay for it. You know, when you you take the wall car, you drive, you know, you leave the parking lot and break down right there. You know what you're going to think? Man, I made a bad choice. <laughs> They say that brand new BMW was there. I could have picked out that. Even if you don't want to think like that, the mind will tell you I made a bad choice. But what I'm trying to say is, remember this, the scripture tells us anything and everything, whatever you do, you labor, you will receive it. 
God will never become a debtor to anybody. Remember this. God will never become a debtor to anybody. He has a plenty of money, plenty of things to give every one of us. Do you remember a prodigal son? When he left the father, when he came to himself, you know what he said? There are so many servants in my workers in my father's house. They have a money, they have a food. Heavenly Father always have enough food for you and me, enough money for you and me. Time to time he releases from there. Amen? Amen. That's what you know, carnally people, the spiritual people always think there is a God. Like Sister Alma said, you know, there is a, because of the Spirit of God lives in her, she knows everything is going to be all right. If the natural people or carnally people, they think, well, I got to do this and I got to do that. But they don't think God is in control. Then later on, because I, because I did this and because I, you know, gave the first aid, she could have been survived. I tell you, my friends, God is in control of everything. Amen? Amen? Finally, I would like to tell you one more thing. Think about this. Spiritual people always, they discern before things happen. Amen? Amen? There was a woman in the Bible in the Old Testament. The prophet came to her house and told and prophesied, in a process of time, I'm going to come and you're going to have a child. And she said, no, 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 we are all old, we, we're not going to have a child. Don't say it like this. But in a process of time, a year later when he was passing by, and she got a child. That child grew a little bigger and bigger, and when he became you know, uh, 10, 12 years old, one day the child said, Mama, I have a headache. Let, let's it, and lie down and uh, die. What the mother did is, he put the child in the room where the man used to stay every time when he comes, and put him in the, in the uh, man of God where he stays, and she went to her husband and said, you know, tell my husband to send one man and a donkey. Uh, I need to meet the man of God. The husband asked, you know, this is not the full moon. There's a time people, they go to uh, the prophet, certain things to pray about it, to find out the God's leading and willing, whatever it is. But he said, hey, there's not a full moon or there's a special day, but you need to go and meet him. And he said, everything's okay. And here, this woman told this servant, you keep going straight to the prophet. Don't stop it until we get there. When the man of God, you know, looked at, this is a woman, you know, uh, coming. I don't know why she's coming. And he come to, he sent his servants to find out what's happening. And the servant comes to, and the woman said, woman, is there anything we can do? You know what she said? She didn't say, my son is dead there. I come to see him. All is well. At the moment when she said, all is well, the son was resurrected from the dead when the man of God came and touched him and they lay upon him and brought the son alive. Think about it for a moment. She could have told them, you know, a man, you promised and that God is going to give a child, but he didn't tell me that he's going to die in 12 or 10 or 12 years of age. He's going to die, but he's dead. He didn't, she didn't say, all is well. But as the Lord lives, and he lived, I don't want to leave you. I want you to come and pray for him. That's what the spiritual people they do. They trust God for any kind of circumstances, any kind of a situation they face, the spiritual people always, they believe, because the Spirit of God that lives in you, that prompts you to believe, things will happen for you. Are we all here? Amen. Amen. And sometimes when we are sick, you know, when we go to the hospital, we think this will be the last day, you're not going to come out of the hospital. Amen? But the, God has a plan for you. I helped uh, greatly uh, a friend of us 
and I had a surgery and he wrote all the will and everything on his wife's name and uh, told me, you know, uh, Pastor, anything happens to me, uh, you take care, help my family. I said, well, that's not going to happen. You will be well. Believe it or not, you will be well. And you will be stronger than ever before. Believe it or not, after the third or fourth time, the had a back surgery, is more stronger than ever before. Amen? Amen? God is able to stand in your feet and to be victorious, not victimized. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why Apostle Paul said, we need to be spiritual people than natural people or natural men or carnal people. Amen? Amen. Amen. So pray and seek God. Spiritual people always, the, the, that is, you know, they all wanted to be growing the spiritual life. Always they look for the place where they are praying, where there is a meeting. Always they wanted to hear. I always wanted to pray. The spiritual people always they pray more, they listen more, they and, and attend more every meeting. Carnal people, they think, oh, I know everything. But really, they don't know nothing. When the trouble comes, and the problem comes, they don't know. Even though the, the, those people, those who walk with Jesus, they thought everything they can do it, but they couldn't be able to do it certain things. They carnally begin to think, we're going to all be going to die. But Jesus uh, woke up from the, you know, the boat and said, Peace be still. Immediately, everything become calm. When problem comes to you, you and I need to speak, peace be still. Not to wonder here and there, to find out what God is going to speak to us through somebody. God has given you the power. Like uh, Sister Alma said that today, the devotion was very powerful. God has given the power to speak, but we don't speak. We don't say things. We are, we are afraid. We are you know, nervous what to do and how to do things. But when you speak, God will honor and bring a victory to you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today, let your prayers should be a spiritual man and a spiritual woman. You know, sometimes you go through a difficult time because God is with you. The enemy doesn't like that you are trusting God and believing in God. You try to bring doubt in your heart and your mind. But continue to believe that you are saved and sanctified if only God fail. The moment you begin to believe in such a way, you're going to experience the victory each and every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we come before you. There are times we begin to think as a natural man. This is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. There are times that we become a carnal people that never wanted to grow, never wanted to be participate in any of the things of godly. But we today, we repent. We come to you, Father. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us. And help us to be a doer of your word. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we sing one more time the song, Everyone Need a Compassion? <clears throat> That's a beautiful song. Every one of us, we need a compassion from the Lord Jesus.
everyone needs compassion. Love has never been. sanctifying us with your Holy Spirit. Continue to lead us and guide us in the way that you want us to go. Not according to our own ways of God. Your ways are higher than our ways of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has a plan for each and every one of us. God wants to place in a higher place. But we need to become a spiritual people. Spiritual people always discern to follow Christ. Spiritual people, they pray more. They'll push everything, hindrances away and follow in Christ. Spiritual people, they become tolerance of any kind of way. And enough climates, spiritual climates, they can able to tolerate anything that comes in their way, hurts, hard feelings, Father, I pray today, help us to forgive one another, help us to follow you as you follow, O oh God. Not by speaking our own words, O oh God, but to make us be a doer of your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, bless everyone, those who are here in the church on the hill farm. Let no one leave this place. Let your very presence go with them. Bless them and bless their family members of God. We thank you, we praise you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shall we all worship the Lord in the offering and time this morning?
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.